Coach, thoughts on the scrimmage on Saturday? Shoot, we, we moved on to tonight's practice. <laughs> we practiced twice today, yeah. so that's, that seems like a while ago. Yeah, but we weren't around, though. Yeah, so, yes. Apologize. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, there's some Appreciate good things, it. just like everything else, good things and bad things. You know, we, we, uh, uh, we Ben Molina didn't didn't really scrimmage, so it gave us an opportunity to look at um, all our other backs um, and, and work through that. And uh, uh, I thought uh, Cam Spillier showed some things that was, uh, you know, got loose and, and continues to get better. Both our tight ends have continued to get better uh, blocking and, and catching the ball, which takes some pressure off of uh, some of these young receivers too. So if they can continue to come on, it gives us a whole other dimension. I thought defensively, uh, we had a lot of young guys that are playing. We're, it's our challenge this week, you know, with uh, the number of uh, actual two-a-day practices to try to get um, the young guys that, that are going to play this year to get them up to speed. And uh, there, there's a bunch of them that, that showed some real good flashes. So we're going to give them an opportunity to try to try to get in the two deep here, and uh, it'll help uh, help kind of clear that up for for us offensively and defensively, but, but special teams primarily it's just so we can get those guys involved because we got a lot of guys that have, a, you know, that, that, that can help us. You know, all those linebackers, the young guys are, uh, showed flashes Saturday and today. Uh, we did a little goal line here live tonight. Uh, so, um, you know, all those young linebackers give a, give a, have a real chance to help us on special teams where we didn't have any depth. You know, last year, Sean Porter and, and all those Jenkins and, and, and Stu, and we, we got all those guys running down the field on kickoff. We, we just didn't have any depth. And now we've got some young guys that, that have, have talent. And uh, uh, we got to figure out how they're going to get the mix. I know you already knew him before, but uh, what has Coach Spavitol shown you in the seven, eight months he's been here? I think you? he's, uh, you know, how he's approached things, or, you know, how he does things has been, has been uh, a real, real help to us. Like I said, he brings instant credibility. Um, uh, you know, dealing with you know, dealing with coaching Case Keenum and, and uh, you know uh, just the, the number of guys in Oklahoma, Oklahoma State and and, and West Virginia uh, and, and you know being around us before and being around the offense, he knows it like the back of his hand and, and also is able to, to add some extra extra things, you know, some wrinkles and, and so. I think his communication with our, our quarterbacks has been has been really really good, and I think his communication with with uh, our offensive staff and, and Coach McKinney's been has been excellent. I was gonna say, how is that dynamic different, or is it is it different from maybe what it was a year ago when you had Clifton? Well, you got you know you, you got uh, you know, Clarence is is uh, the play caller, and uh, so every year you know things have changed. You shoot, this is six years. This is a third different guy. So the other two guys are head coaches. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we've, we've had some pretty good guys, and, and Clarence is no different. And, and we've got a number of talented guys on the offensive staff, the ability for each guy to be able to say, hey, here's what I'm trying to do, here's what I'm trying to help. Uh, and they all have their expertise, that, that uh, just like the Clifford's here, that, that, uh, from the run game to with, with BJ and where Clarence was to you know, the passing game with, with David Beatty. It's, it, it works out just fine. I think uh, our guys communicate as well with each other as they do with the team, and because of that, you know, I think uh, I, I think you know we're moving right along. We've got some new wrinkles. We're trying to get people incorporated in the offense. We got to figure out, you know, what our guys can do, and, and not what our offense is, but what our guys can do within our offense, and then and then uh, make sure we're getting those guys involved. You had quarterback battles, I think, 08 and then last year for starters, but when you're developing a backup, are there some consistencies or philosophies that you developed over the course of your career that well, have helped yeah. you achieve? I mean, yeah, we, you know, we rotate you know, uh, guys all the time. So we, we do that fast start just so you guys can say, so-and-so is the number two quarterback. <laughs> so-and-so is the number one quarterback. And if you guys have paid attention, it really doesn't matter. We're just, we're just rotating. And we're getting them snaps and trying to keep their arms alive instead of, uh, you know, some, you know, even a couple of weeks, we'll, we'll figure it out. But we're trying to figure out um, through reps, you know, who's who's doing what, who, who can handle what, and give everybody a chance to compete. You know, those, you got three guys that, 
that, uh, that uh, you know, I don't know, somebody told me Matt Jokel, I don't know, he's played, what, 11 snaps? So, you know, with all that, it, it, we really don't have the other guys that have not played a whole lot. And uh, so we're, we're trying to get them all a bunch of snaps and get people back back up to speed. And, and at the same time, trying to get some continuity with the receivers and get them all rolling in now. What are the most important qualities for you when you're looking into signal call? Um, you know, leadership, knowledge of the offense, uh, being comfortable, not giving the ball to the other team. It's pretty simple, huh? Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions that have been answered so far that you came into camp with? Anything that you've been able to absolutely put to bed? Um, I don't know about that. You know, it's, we, we're so far away right now. From, you know, we, we've got uh, uh, really over almost three weeks until we play you know, two and change. So, yeah, you, you, you want to keep people, uh, keep them healthy. We've got to practice hard. And, and, you know, you get here in the next week, you get guys that are coming in and out of practice just from the heat and everything else. So you never know. You know, we're, we're, we're still trying to develop, you know, who, which is, who, which of these young guys are going to help us and what their role is going to be, and that's going to be ongoing probably up until game week. Do you ever look back on that first season and say, goodness, first season here, say, goodness gracious, you set the bar high with 11 and 2, where to from here, or is it just each season individual? If it's, no, it's, 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 it's all individual. You know, challenges will be the – you got challenges every year. Um, I think, uh, you know, the, the 11 and 2 was – the importance of it was the momentum that it created for us in recruiting. I think it's reflected in, in, in this class. Um, the quality of the student athlete that we were able to recruit, I think had, that, that had a lot to do with it. I also think, you know, from our fans and, 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 and you know, uh, expectations are a good thing. You know, you, you want to be a, a program or a team that, that uh, is going to be involved in relevant games. And uh, these guys are, are working hard to uh, attain that again this year and, and try to